Hello, and welcome back to the summary series. I decided I'd go for another special since the last one was it was pretty well received by the people who matter most. And if you've checked your calendar and read the title, you can most likely glean what kind of special this one is. Now, it was nowhere on my list of video ideas this year, but my best friend requested it after we both hatched this idea, and, uh, well, I had a little too much fun with it. So we agreed it could be a fun little experimental video, but, uh, fingers crossed that I can get it out in time. I doubt it, but we're gonna shoot for it. I've had a lot of fun doing my silly summary series, poking fun at my passionate group work, as well as the shit show it was born out of. So today, we're gonna focus on just the latter part and summarize it. And just so you're aware, I did partially suffer through watching bits of Volume 8 just to research this fucking video. I did it drunk, but I did it nonetheless. So I expect either a medal or a cake in the mail for this one. Anywho, I think that's enough setup. I've got a literal decade's worth of cardboard cutouts and their uninteresting adventures to cover for you lovely viewers. Mary Sue, the speediest little meth head you've ever seen. She calls her stuff Rose Petal because it's so smooth before and after smoking it. Other than that, she's a fake-ass weapon nerd fascinated by the most useless shit ever conceived. Worthless Brat, a stuck-up racist wearing what's essentially a girly clan outfit without the hood, and in later years did everything she could to avoid upskirts by making herself more blue and therefore uglier. Worthless Cat Brat, a lying little cunt that most of the fanbase can't stop shoving the misshapen tits onto literally everyone. And finally, Yellow Trash. A slut so easy to manipulate, all you gotta do is make up a sob story and tell her that the bird in your backyard is her mother in disguise. With their ripoffs they call inspiration combined, they become the second most annoying group of cunts to be assembled since Ghostbusters 2016. After each of them gets a trailer for the idiots to whack off to, the show actually begins with... A snooze fest where not Cortana searches the history of their world on Bing to read off the first four results. Remember folks, starting your action adventure series with monotonous exposition, spoon feeding the details of your world is a fantastic way to hook new viewers and keep the existing fans coming back for more. I'm gonna stop myself from nitpicking this show before I spend the next five months making another feature length movie. So let's get back on track and summarize what the show has to offer. Nothing. Literally nothing of importance. But apparently, I wouldn't have gotten very far if that's what I took away from all this oh-so-relevant high school drama bullshit. I can't, I can't even read that damn comment. I can't even paraphrase it without dying. <laughs> oh, That's why I've never even replied to that little fucker. I still vividly remember the night that he posted it. And I immediately went to the floor, dying. Here I go again. Okay. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Shipping wars. A tournament that gets stopped every five minutes to give shipping mate. Yay. Oh, and the rape of Adam and Yang's character during the equivalent of 9-11. <sighs> Again, absolutely nothing. What is this, Ruby Walking Simulator? Talk about boring. <laughs> Cringe. But at least the show finally crossed into So Bad It's Funny territory, and we got some nice memes out of it. Oh, I'm almost there. Is any of this actually necessary? Uh, being with Callie so long has desensitized me to all the normal types of foreplay. Oh! Now hit me with a fireball! <laughs> hey, save the spear thrusting for your wife. Uh, uh, now blow me! I really wish you wouldn't phrase it quite like that. Oh good, we made it! You guys aren't gonna start without me, are you? Had a promising start, but of fucking course the writers immediately had to backtrack and ruin it. We did it, folks. We've officially crossed into so bad it's infuriating territory, and you can't even make funny jokes about it. I 
hate being kept in the dark like this. Uh, you could scooch back a little. There are windows up there. It's probably brighter. <laughs> yeah, it's that bad. Cringe. Also featuring a Trump allegory, a fucking course, and the writer's idea of feminism. Remember, folks, it's totally not a bad idea to give someone a doctor's license after they dropped out of med school during the first year. That totally doesn't create the Sharivers of the world. Warning. Ultra cringe. The writers really fucked it up with this one by taking a page from The Last Jedi. The four bitches destroy an entire kingdom, causing millions to be homeless, forcing them to emigrate to discount Tatooine, all to make Marubi Su's sex toy into a fake human bitch. Spoiler, Cindy sniffs more cocaine and she and Miles. I mean Jean have their way with the sex toy. So in other words, we've gone from mega cringe to unbridled dog shit. Nice. Also, you could tell even Fat Man is tired when this is his only say on the show after a year. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. And fuck you, I'm out. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. And fuck you, I'm out! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. And fuck you, I'm out! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. And fuck you, I'm out! I'm guessing that's funnier in context somehow, but I just see it as a sign that even shitting on it isn't all that fun anymore. Kill me. Oh my god, just fucking die already. Now that you know everything you need to know about the plot of this burning trash pile, let's get to summarizing the most important part. The cast of this piece of shit. Mary Sue. The whiny bitch with the chihuahua voice going around trying to spread her cringe virus. Whenever she's not having her victories handed to her by winking at every non-human enemy with her magic flashlight eyes, she's terrorizing the world with her generic hero speeches and war crimes. Worthless brat. A flat-chested hoe with the second worst singing voice in the series. She tries to cry about her rough childhood and get every uncritical idiot to demonize her father, just so the company gets cancelled by Twitter tards, and she doesn't have to bear any responsibility. Worthless cat brat. From kinda annoying emo bookworm that was implied to be a starving orphan, to surprise, she's actually the princess of a tropical island paradise and her parents are alive and well. Aaron really went like, Um, why does only Miles get a self-insert? Why don't I get a self-insert as well? And the writers are like, Sure, darling. You rile up the crazy shippers that get people talking about this shit show we're making. So we'll absolutely turn Blake into a bisexual spoiled brat with delusions of being abused and discriminated against. You happy now? Good. And so, new Blake was born. A delusional hypocrite whining about being a victim of abuse, when in actuality she's the one abusing poor son and obsessing over Adam. Go ahead and pause to read this if you need. I'll wait. Also, as far as I'm aware, has yet to apologize or even mention to her flat-chested hoe friend the fact that they're actually both privileged little princesses with heavily exaggerated stories about their mentor figures in life. Hell, I'm not even sure if these two had more than ten words together since the reunion in Volume 5. Thanks again, Aaron. Yellow Trash was supposed to be the caring older sister, but then Aaron happened. Now this piece of trash would be more than willing to abandon her little sister in a burning building and go save the worthless pussy that caused her to lose an arm instead. Talk about pathetic. The self-insert. Miles here can be best described as a cuck. A verifiable cuck at that. So, but, and you're okay with that? Yeah, see, because, because, yeah, Aaron, Aaron is, uh, Aaron's bisexual, bisexual, <laughs> bisexual. <laughs> that reminds me of something that we should bring up Wait, in a moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, not I'm her probably, being bisexual. Like, not her being bisexual. No. But no, yeah, I, like I talked about before, I was like, right. hey, no, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. I'm right here. And You're no. like, no, I'm cool with it. Yeah. I was like, well, not, no, because some that's people. That's not totally hot so, or she, anything. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing. She, she <laughs> dated a guy before that was like, she was like, would you ever, you know, you, you would get upset with me if I ever like cheated on you with a girl, right? And he was like, nah, dude, that's totally hot. And that's like, I don't understand that. Like, I, I can understand if, if my girlfriend were to cheat on me with another girl, I would say that <laughs> I would be less insulted than if it was a guy, because a guy is something like, 
A well, guy can offer her the same thing. It's not your direct a, a competition. A girl cannot. I can yeah. physically not give her the same thing but that a girl can give her. It's still an emotional attachment. Well, exactly. That's the thing. Offended. I wouldn't feel as bad, but I'd still feel really bad. I'd be like, what the fuck? That's not cool. So, yeah, no, we understand. It's like, you know, she came back to me. It's like, would, you know, is, would this kind of thing be okay? I was like, yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm right here. Right, also, it'd be guys. awesome to watch. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... But nonetheless, a cuck with bad taste in women, and no clue what the hell he's doing until someone spells it out for him with a Sharpie and whiteboard. Not to mention a completely unrealistic idea of a skinny woman wanting anything to do with him. Oh wait, wasn't I supposed to describe his character? My bad. The Annoying Pink, aka the second biggest reason to watch this show with your finger over the mute button at all times. Unless you're deaf and just here to watch her obsess over the lamest fucker in the show for her cheap and boring shipping material. In which case, knock yourself out. The lamest motherfucker whose only saving grace was that the creator voiced him. Yeah, basically what I said on the tin. Barely talks, does nothing. Really should have died after his arc was done in Volume 4. Then again, it would have been better if everyone died before Volume 4 even started, but you know, greed and stupidity gotta run the world into the dirt. Miss Perfect. The Canadian superstar and way too nice for her own good, even by Canadian standards, with an absolutely shitty taste in men. Please give me cock. Do you have cock? No! She tried a brief career as a combat instructor before sacrificing herself in true Greek mythological hero type fashion. But sadly, Miles just couldn't grasp even the basics of sword fighting. And it's a shame she never taught him the lesson he really needed to hear the most, though. Sideways for a kiss on the cheek. Long ways to get a harem. The side bitches that exist purely to inspire deviant art artists so that the show can steal from them later. From the worthless lesbian and her rabbit to the oh-so-bad school bullies. Every. Single. One. Is a little more than a cardboard cutout with a gun duct taped to them so that RT can torture its overworked animators some more. Yeah, I'm not wasting my time going over any of them any deeper. You could make a new soup recipe in the time that would take. The only one I will spend a little time on. Return to Monkey. The rarest strain of male characters that isn't a cuck or uncharacteristically evil. Shocking, right? Sadly, it's of no use. This show's hatred for men led the poor guy to getting both physically and emotionally abused by his supposed love interest, the cat bitch. Until he decides he wants neither her nor the dusty old broad hitting on him. So he uses her stupidity to get him a free trip back home so he can dump her on the dumb blonde bitch. While he, Nep, and the boys go on a fishing trip. The fuckload of unimportant teachers. Alright, lightning round time. There's the creepy fat old fuck, the meth head, the big titty magic milf, the limp dicked lion, the funny old lady that's about as funny as a full litter box, all the dead jobbers, yada fucking yada. Technically, I guess the drunken uncle and the cyborg count, but we'll get to them later. They're not as useless as those preceding them. Plot hole central. A dumbass who broke into a woman's house, kidnapped her, tricked her into sex, and then died from super syphilis. His story should have ended there, but the geniuses at the writer's room had to keep this train wreck going by bringing him back, killing him, and repeating until his Stockholm Syndrome bitch accidentally became a goddess, got everyone else killed in a genocide, and then became so evil that he had to be brought back again as a demigod that can die but not really because he couldn't finally return to the bliss of death after his bitch is dead too so whatever the fuck you want to call him. He came back, then he stuck his cock in it again and wound up with four kids that he led to slaughter out of sheer shame, pissing off his wife and leading to a couple thousand years worth of a messy divorce that always ends in him dying constantly, reviving, and dying again, over and over again. Until now when he's all up inside a little boy's body trying to get a Mary Sue to help him kill his unkillable wife. Next up, the ice cream slut. Roman's henchgirl that was thankfully spared an actual voice. We already have enough cringy voice actors as it is. No need to add another one. Before the inevitable slut upgrade, she did have a cool design, I guess. Roman, I'm cool enough to not need a nickname, Torchwick. One of the few characters in the show that actually had a personality and charisma. Thank God he got to leave this trash fire before they could fuck his character with a cheese grater and give him the Adam treatment as well. But watch, they'll give his slut a flashback scene revealing him to be her abusive foster father who made her a mute after he got fed up with her mouthing off on Xbox. Stop it. Shut your fuck up, you motherfucking bitch! Hey, I'm gonna tell you on you. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you, bitch! What the fuck you cussing on Xbox for?! Oh my god, you don't know Get the fuck off! Get off! You don't care! Crack whore. Jessica. I mean, Cinder. I mean, Jessica. 
I mean, Cinder is a dumb cunt with some serious issues. Somehow she took her stepmom wanting her to help out with the household chores as a personal insult and made it the reason why she murders everyone, runs off to the circus to be with the other freaks, takes up drugs, and eventually meets not Cortana after eating some shrooms. Years later, she's organizing the anarchy to overthrow kingdoms, all while leaving it up to her minions most of the time. Despite the fact that by 12 years old, she apparently had the strength of Hulk Hogan, if she's able to strangle a grown woman with one hand while her shock collar goes up to 11. But she still leaves it up to everyone else, so she can get back to her huge collection of slutty outfits that she uses to earn money and boost her subscriber count on OnlyFans. Oops. My bad. I forgot this was supposed to be about her character, not just herself. Silly me again. Seriously, you could replace this bitch with a painting on the wall, and the only thing that changes is her oh-so-wonderful voice actress never gets the role. Oh no, such a tragedy. However would she get into any other career than her slutty cosplays? Emmy, the crack horse tier 3 simp, suffering from a severe and sadly incurable case of Stockholm Syndrome. She spends her free time on her side job as a pickpocket, in the hopes of one day being able to save up enough money to be able to join the VIP tier on the crack whores only fans. Also, this one goes out to all the blue check marks who appraise this show for its diversity and talk about how progressive the cast is till the cows come home, despite the fact that the first and most recurring black character just so happens to be the one with the same color scheme as fried chicken and watermelon. I don't have anything else to say. That joke writes itself. The school shooter. The other high school dropout working with the crack whore. He could have been an interesting character if he was handled by competent writers. Instead, he's just a generic snarky asshole, perfectly fitting the shitty parenting syndrome turned me into a serial killer stereotype. Blech. Adam version 1, aka the only Adam that matters. He used to be the cat bitch's mentor, but the spoiled brat's delusions resisted any attempts of teaching. Once the cat bitch finally left the White Fang, he was like, thank god, one less problem for me. Until the crack whore came back to him to create a new one. Fucking hell. After a short while of dealing with her, she took him to his breaking point by leading so many of his loyalists to a genocide, and then had the audacity to be surprised when they got skeptical of her plan. Such a shitty day left Adam needing a lengthy vacation. Not Cortana, the big baddie of the whole series that is quite possibly the biggest camping bitch in history, sitting firmly on her throne, trusting animals, a flying whale monster, gutter sluts, and psychopaths to play the game properly, while she corner camps with a shotgun waiting on her husband to arrive. Jesus, let me kill this nigga. After which, she loots him until she can get the keys to the apocalypse. I had a root for her, if she had a chance against Mary Sue and whatever ass pull is used to kill her in the next season. Dr. Brass Balls. Now, I'll admit, I wasn't gonna include this fucker, since he couldn't be any more predictable as the evil tech genius if he tried. Lame. And I still don't know how retarded he may have been by Volume 7, nor do I care to know. But, he makes it onto my list at the 11th hour, because while researching the last two shitty seasons, he redeemed himself almost entirely with this little display here. And take what is mine. <laughs> oh, of course you are, because that's just what you do, isn't it? And how has that worked out for you? You stormed into Freya's room thinking you could take on Ironwood's top fighter and war machine. But you couldn't. And that machine became the Winter Maiden. Oh, and let's not forget your deal with Raven Brownwind. Get all your enemies in one place so you'd have a shot at revenge. If only someone could have warned you against such a miserable idea. Oh, wait. I did. But you pushed ahead and you lost it when all you had to do was your job. I think you're entitled to everything just because you've suffered, but suffering isn't enough! You can't just be strong, you have to be smart! You can't just be deserving, you have to be worthy! But all you have ever been is a bloody migraine! HA! <laughs> GOTTY! <laughs> Pretty fucking base, not gonna lie. I knew it couldn't last though, not in this show, so Crack Whore locked him in a building and set it on fire. Make of this show and its trend of killing off every male character with any semblance of a backbone what you will. The oh-so-original psychopath. The scorpion faggot who simps for not Cortana because he saw her Halo 4 look. He wants to fuck up Crow and Mary Sue for giving him a smack on the ass with their scythes. There, I just broke down this entire character in 40 words or less. Moving on. The one that drinks and has shitty family. The one that got cancelled. The drunk uncle. Whatever you want to call him. Poor, poor Crow. 
Not only did he have to endure growing up with that slut he has to call a twin sister, once he gets to escape the clutches of the gang, sorry, tribe of criminals he calls his family in a 10 Beacon Academy, he gets put on a team with Ty the Supercuck and the OG Mary Sue, and turned into a bird by the crazy old fuck that is their headmaster. Also, he can have someone spy on not Cortana for him. Then, after graduating, he had to face the tragic news that his hobo slut of a sister got herself knocked up with Ty's baby, and that there was going to be a wedding planned. Hooray, I guess. Unsurprisingly, the baby turned out to be so annoying that Raven dumped both Ty and the baby on dear Uncle Crow, who started drinking to cope with all this shit. After all that was said and done, Ty got it on with OG Mary Sue. Crow already knew it would end in disaster, and lo and behold, it did. Summer gave birth to her clone, then went to resume her epic Mary Sue Grimslayer duty, and then she died by tripping on her shoelaces in front of a puddle of quicksand. Unwilling to keep doing Ty's job for him, Crow started to drink even more and disappeared just to have some peace and quiet while he's drinking. I can relate. Unfortunately for him, his bad luck semblance kept him from the sweet release of death by alcohol poisoning. What a bummer. Years later, his nieces are all grown up, and he has to play the cool uncle, and he's still slaving away for the old bastard. And what does he get in return? He gets poisoned. For real. His semblance still keeps him from dying, though. And he only gets ridiculed and yelled at. Oh, and then the jealous cunt made sure his voice actor got cancelled. Talk about bad luck. Then, to top it all off, he gets to join Adam in the terrible redesigned hell with a sign above his head begging for someone to kill him. Show me a bigger downgrade. I'll wait. The Cheap Hooker otherwise known as the hobo mother who ditched her husband and daughter out of the blue. Can't say I blame her, since both have negative IQs. And now she's found in a dirt camp with other thieves and killers brooding whenever Crow comes to ask if she'll pay child support now. Oh, and I guess she's also conveniently the magic bitch with her own key to an omniscient genie slut that she refuses to pursue because... Laziness, I guess? Yeah, I don't get why retards compare this old worn-out whore to Virgil. Like, at all. She does everything she can to run from opportunities for power and settles for sitting around waiting for someone to murder and rob, but calls that strength. This isn't even an apples to oranges comparison, it's apples to fucking whale blubber. The ugly cat cunt that everyone wants to see fucked in the ears for whatever reason. <sighs> Do I really gotta talk about this? I never liked this bitch. Her design, color palette, voice actress, interest in son, all of that, it just never interested me in the slightest. But oh well, here we are. She failed to save the world by aborting Blake and instead spends her days sipping tea and posing for the fan artist to fap to. The peak of uselessness. Cunt. Better known as wasted character design. Why shove in a totally pointless character literally at the last minute and spend money on voice acting and character design, only to kill off said pointless character after only five seconds of screen time? Well, the short version is, Aaron said Adam equals bad. So of course they had to make a new character to emphasize that, then get the most insufferable twat to voice her, just for good measure. Adam's clone. After checking in with the Crackhorn and her minions at the end of Volume 2, poor Adam felt so emotionally exhausted that he went on a long beach vacation. Of course, the dumbasses of the White Fang couldn't be left unsupervised, so he tried an experimental cloning device to see if that would help him out. Unfortunately, something went terribly wrong, and that's when clone Adam was born. Identical in looks, but with a lack of short-term memory, and, well, a lack of brains in general, plus a drastic loss in strength. Because while the OG Adam could one-shot a big-ass mech with his fuck you, I'm awesome semblance, his clone could barely even scratch the paint on a much smaller robo-arm that's already been abused by its dumb owner. And the cherry on top of clone Adam? He had a very, very bad taste in women. So bad he wanted Blake back of all people. Ugh. Don't ever go there. But that's what he did. He then started team-killing all the Fang members and every other clone of Adam. Master, Adam, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? Except for the pedophile. No, 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 not that one. The animated one. Jeez. That one voiced one of the dumb teachers anyways. The one that even went to Yang's house. So, so we really should have seen this one coming. They were showing the signs. Monty was a fucking precog, it looks like. But anyways, yeah. The lizard with a hunger for a little stray pussy. <coughs> yes, I threw up a little in my mouth just saying that. Other than that sick interest in giving Blake fans even more shipping bait. This bitch is nothing more than another Adam clone, but with a vagina. So many clones. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna have to interrupt my summary for a bit, because this is a burning question we just gotta have the answer to after all this talk about cloning. So hypothetically, say you have two clones of yourself. Maybe you have more, maybe you have less. But we'll just stick to two for now. And for whatever reason, your two clones start fucking each other. Is that plain old gay? Masturbation? Or incest? 
I'm legit curious what you guys and gals got on that. With technology progressing every year, it'll only be a matter of time before we go from cloning glow-in-the-dark cats to full-on humans. And it'll only be a matter of time before some narcissist spawn of a billionaire decides they want to literally fuck themselves. Or watch themselves fuck themselves. So we gotta know, so that we as a society can avoid all the pointless moral grandstanding and bullshit. Put your answers down below, because this is a mystery we just gotta solve. Oh, wow! Wow! The political allegory. I was gonna group Jimbo in at first and make it political allegories, but I got individual roasts for them, so they're separated. What a joy. For Jacques, all I gotta say is, he's a decent pop. You can't say he drove any of his kids to death or seriously fucked up things. Yet. Even at the end of Volume 8, all of them are alive. Supposedly. I... Watch, they're gonna prove me wrong just to spite me. I don't know, and I don't care. But aside from that, Chief Smackaho here was made uncharacteristically evil for the sake of a Trump allegory in time for election season. And... Yeah, there's nothing of substance to this motherfucker. Like, at all. You seeing the trend yet? All these useless characters? Iron Daddy. The cyborg with an actual plan that Team Mary Sue can't let happen because it could get people killed. Because God forbid people die in a war that's beyond any of their control. What we need is perfect solutions that can be achieved by their lead bitch blinking at every enemy and will potentially get even more people killed. But no. We can't have a man make a reasonable plan in this show. This is all about empowering women and fuck the patriarchy. Snow cunt. Stuck up Atlas brat, just like her sister. The main difference? This one has tits. And style. You gotta have that. The one that Christina V voiced, just to torment me and Kara. You know what? I could go on a tirade about this shitty plot point that literally adds nothing. I could just say this is another useless character and leave it at that. Or I could even repeat hashtag not my velvet for four minutes straight. But you know, I think I found a better way to summarize my thoughts on this character. We're gonna play this little game called Guess the Passion. So you, yes you, I'm gonna play you some clips now, and I wanna ask you, which sounds like the actress is more into the role and having fun? Ready? Go! Arthur! I finally have an answer to your question. Why do you think that birds fly? Birds fly. Because they want to fly. They don't need a reason even if their wings may snap and doom them to die. They don't fly for anyone's benefit. They don't fly because they were ordered to. Birds fly because they want to fly and for no other reason! Help is on the way. And for those of you in Sector 17, I'll be seeing you personally. He had a reason for... A reason?! To spare the world of its pain? Don't give me that! Who will spare my brother's pain? Who will soothe my brother's despair? He murdered my little brother Loppy! And you'll stand there and tell me it was for the greater good?! And I have nothing to do with- Only?! He will cut me, he will burn me, and I will keep charging forward. Your job is to keep healing me so that I can stay on my feet. A sacrificial assault then. Oh, it's not a bad plan. There's a good chance you'll catch him off guard. If you don't immediately die. But, but, Velvet, you'll- That's an order. Destroy it. So who are they? Who's actually behind this? Yang, Blake, where are you? We can't tell you that part yet. Well, look, we are trusting you. So trust us when we say that Amity Tower needs to stay a secret until it's done. We just need a little more time. I won't stop until I know the whole truth. Are you cold? I'm fine, but I'm not the one with the exposed midriff. Doesn't bother me, either. And watch where you let your eyes wander. Sorry, Kalos. I really wanted to pummel you on my own, but the General insisted I share. 
What was your daddy drinking when he skeet you out? Maybe you got rid of that old yee yee ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. Oh, better yet, maybe Tanisha will call your dog ass if she ever stop fucking with that brain surgeon the lawyer she fucking with, nigga. I rest my motherfucking case. Not gonna lie though, I don't hate the fan art of this bitch and snow cut together. Although I strongly prefer the pieces that either have her face deep in that albino pussy, or just playing with her hair down. Because seriously, what the fuck even is this haircut? The Hlea de Lis? It's fucking ugly, that's what it is. And I hope to fuck that Christina didn't have them base this off a look she did once, ever in her life. Cause that'd just be horrible. Christina's a pretty beautiful woman already. No need to ruin that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say, I'm happily a Christina simp. She's beautiful, she's a phenomenal voice actress, and a decent singer to boot. I like that one at least, but eh, here I go rambling. Let me, where was I even at? Oh yeah, her. <laughs> that one. Yeah, Velvet's better. Just ignore this like I do as much as I can. The gay bait. The Captain America wannabe. Tyrion fucked him from behind with a machete for dropping the soap. Yet the fanatics still rage for the lack of gay representation. Because we all know, if it's not two certain black and yellow bitches scissoring each other on camera, it doesn't count as gay representation, or gay enough. Really says a lot about the fans, when given an inch of fan service, they expect the whole fucking planet. The one that's apparently got an origami cock. Alright, be honest, would you even know which bitch I was talking about if I didn't start by mentioning the fact that they masturbated with an angle grinder? I'm dead serious. I wouldn't. I legit wasn't sure if this was the lamb, or the blue-haired tumblerina. Part of that's also because I didn't actually watch the whole season, and I never will. But yeah, it's the blue-haired one. She's the trans, unimportant nothing character, but trans, related to toxic white straight male number 5011, who tried hitting on the one with no tits back in volume 4. Yeah, did I mention that she's trans yet? By the way, that doesn't appear in any of the episodes as far as I know. It only comes from Twitter. Yeah. That should tell you how unimportant this character is. And that's the perfect place to end the talk of the characters. Really puts it into perspective, what's become of an overworked animator's passion project, if that's the gist of their new characters. And one last stop before we round out. Volume warning, red alert. Seriously, turn it the fuck down. No, no, I can't. Stop the bleeding in my ears, please. Can someone- It's so terrible, it's- It's so bad Kim Jong-un doesn't even torture his prisoners with this- Okay, I'm done styling on foes. So to end this video on a more positive note, I reached out to some friends to collect some ideas on how the show could have been improved, just so I can show you that I'm perfectly capable of giving constructive criticism as well. But I like roasting more because it's more fun. But here's what we got on fixing this up. Firstly, the black trailer, but without any Blake in it. 
Now, before every one of you and your mother start crying, oh, I thought you were gonna be nice on us. Hear me out here. What was objectively the coolest part of this trailer? That's right, Adam absolutely destroying that giant mecha spider thingy, whatever, tank, I guess is what it was. Who even knows at this point? Did it need Blake in it? Hell no. Was she actually a distraction from Adam showing off his objectively better fighting style and how cool it is? Hell yeah. So just get rid of her and make a feature trailer showing off someone that's actually interesting. Next, to fix Ruby. You know what? Years ago I cracked this nut and made it into a video read by an AI. And I don't know why I deleted it, but I did. But I re-uploaded it and it's linked here. Trust me, it's more than making her the mute character. I put a lot of work into that one, so go ahead and check it out. After that we also got a ditch cinder. The most she does in six volumes is kill one and a half people and bark a mix of orders and pickup lines that could only be considered sultry to blind people. So please spare us the cringe. What are we on, number four? Three, four, I forgot. I don't know, I can't keep up with my shit. Anyways, if we absolutely have to keep Ruby and her silver tears to make every Grim react as if they saw Bumblebee fan art and turn the dragon to stone, then it should end in that building collapsing. I mean, all that added weight on a thin, tall tower like that? Ruby's given a lot of middle fingers to the laws of physics, and this ranks among the biggest. Plus, just imagining some characters with black hair and amber eyes just being crushed like bugs under the weight of a Mary Sue's bullshit power that breaks the universe. Oh, it's just delicious irony. Please give it. Alright, next. Kill Soy Boy. Throw him up into a helicopter being piloted by Microsoft Sam. My raffle copter needs swas 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 Next, kill the loudmouth bitch by making her bite the curb. And finally, kill her lame ass boyfriend by having him stepped on the elephant grim or whatever. I don't know. Just all three of them gotta be killed, because their group basically stole the show from the team it's titled after. I mean, people were tuning in more for them, for Jean's relatability and that most Ruby viewers last time talking to another woman was when they demanded the chicken nuggets be brought up by their mother, or they tuned in for Nora's annoying orange level of jokes, or Pira's hot ass, or Ren for... Uh... Monty's voice, I guess? Find me one person who says pre-volume 4 they tuned into the show for Ruby's lack of screen time or Weiss's fight scenes. Spoiler alert, you won't. Either because the person who did that has ditched the show forever ago and they probably forgot about it, or because they don't exist in the first place. The only, and I mean the only, aspects of the Beacon Trilogy anyone cared about that involved Team Ruby was whenever Yang's tits were in frame, and whenever Blake was with her or son for their ship war to have fuel. Don't even try to pretend like anyone cared about Weiss's family drama before Jocks had his first scene in Volume 4. So anyways, kill off Junior. Well yeah, kill him off, he's useless. But yeah, kill him off? And these three here, because they do jack and shit after the fall. Beyond giving a backstory that nobody asked for, give one-liners and fill time. Lame. But you gotta notice, there's someone from this group missing. And that's cause, I'd let Pira live. She can wise up and ditch all these idiots, and avoid the fight with Cindy cause she chose not to bother with the whole maiden bullshit. Because I mean, if she believes in destiny, then it's literally up to her if she wants to be a demigod cunt or not. It's fate that she'd have to believe in if she actually felt she had to do it. So anyways, she can survive to see the end of the fall, see her friends gone and go, Oh, thank God, the embarrassments are gone. I can stop lying to myself and go back to living in the limelight again. Or, you know, take the opportunity to start anew after this disaster, like a certain couple involving a certain blonde and her partner in black. Speaking of that blondie, she isn't involved in the fall. She shouldn't be involved in the fall. Instead, she should be on a boat back home, as far from a certain cat and a certain bull as humanly possible. And instead, she should run into Mercury again. What's he doing there? Neo handled the, uh, no. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Neo handled the randomizer bullshit, whatever, to steal a ship and make that the first one that gets back to the Atlas warship so she can steal it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. But anyways, Yang runs into Mercury again, they scuffle, and come to an agreement while both their worlds come crashing down around them, ditch their previous lives and live on the run, away from a shitty family that doesn't care, away from a nuisance like Cinder, and away from both of their bad reputations. Oh, and another fix? Weiss gets picked up not by her father, but by Winter. No, I'm not explaining why this should be the case for the 14th billionth time. Spark notes it removes a pointless non-character, a cringe political allegory, it gives Winter an actual purpose in the show, and it expands upon Weiss's decision to go with the Huntsman's Academy the furthest from home, and with the fewest funnest attendees since she was at one point a racist twat. The only downside to this fix is that we lose the second funniest Ruby meme template from 2017, right after Sienna getting stabbed memes. 
And well, just read the rest of the fixes Kara, Sug, and me have done to this show whenever we get around to posting it. I keep putting it off and putting it off because gotta do these videos. We'll get to it eventually. And that, ladies and gents, is the best I can summarize this show to you. If you've ever wondered why I make so many Ruby videos, now you can get the general idea. It's just really frustrating how much potential gets squandered just by them choosing to drag this out and make it worse by the minute just to make a quick buck. But I'm just repeating myself at this point. So before I close this video off, I'd just like to clarify that this video speaks my thoughts on the show much clearer and is arguably more entertaining than the 78 minute trash heap that is my first video on this subject. So for that, and because this is a much better edited, voiced, and put together video overall, well, my original Ruby rant slash review slash video slash attempted video slash glorified acid trip, it might be getting unlisted soon. I agree with most, if not all, the sentiments put forth in that video, and my thumbnail is godly, but there's some bad arguments, bad visuals, and segments that just really drag on. This video, I don't think does that, like, at all. And well, I've criticized a couple idiots on this channel about keeping two videos saying the exact same thing while one is objectively worse than the other, and well, I'd like to think my hypocrisy doesn't go that far. However, I want to clarify why the video would only be unlisted. I'm not getting rid of it entirely for two good reasons. Number one, it's good to go back to that and see how my argumentation evolves over the years and how far I've pushed myself to be better. I mean, compared to this, it's night and fucking day. And two, as I showed in the beginning, the comment section of that one is still a gold mine both in terms of the stupid fanboys coping and trying their damnness to defend this show, and in terms of the sweet and supportive comments you're seeing on the screen now. I don't want to lose any of those, so unlisting is a good enough compromise for me because this video, it served its purpose, and I just don't like its bad quality now. And this video has put my first one to shame. I'll drop the link in the description if you really want to go see that video in its comments yourself. And this is something my friend has debated because they really like that video, and they don't want it to go away away like unlisting would do. So I guess that's another thing you can discuss in the comments, if you make it this far. But other than that, I'm just going to move right along. I'm just glad that video is no longer my most viewed video, because I'm not going to lie, whenever I shut off my channel in Discord servers, or to family and friends, the dread of them cringing to death over the badness of that video was just dreadful. I hated that feeling. So I gotta give a quick shout out to all the Sabaton fans who watched and boosted my little meme to completely curb stomp my really bad Ruby video. I can't thank you guys and gals enough for that. But anyway, yeah, with that ramble out of the way, I appreciate you all for taking the time out of your day to check this out. If you enjoyed it, feel free to show however you want to. Happy April Fools, by the way. Hope you've done something decent like, I don't know, turning up the pressure on your faucet to spray your roommate's shirt or something. I don't know. But who am I kidding? This year's April Fools is going to be all about those nuclear missile warning systems on your TV telling you the end is near, because everyone is an asshole. But oh well. Happy April Fools nonetheless. And until that day comes, I'll talk to y'all later. Victory has begun! Death to the NPLA! <laughs>